This spatial tracking is simply amazing. Recovering dense and long range pixel motion in videos is a challenging problem. Part of the difficulty arises from the 3D to 2D projection process leading to occlusions and discontinuities in the 2D motion domains. While 2D motion can be intricate, these researchers posit that the underlying 3D motion can often be simple and low dimensional. That is why in this research, they propose to estimate point trajectories in 3D space to mitigate the issues caused by image projection. Their method which is called as spatial tracker lifts 2D pixels to 3D using monocular depth estimators represents the 3D content of each frame efficiently using a triplane representation and performs iterative updates using a transformer to estimate 3D trajectories. If you go through this project, it has a lot of great examples. And beer with my computer, I don't have very very heavy system so it struggles a bit but you can see what is happening in this one. This is a qualitative comparison for 2D tracking. Motion estimation has historically been approached through two main paradigms. First, feature tracking and second one is optical flow. While each type of method enables numerous applications, neither of them fully captures the motion in a video. Optical flow only produces motion for adjacent frames, whereas feature tracking only tracks sparse pixel. An ideal solution would involve the ability to estimate both dense and long range pixel trajectories in a video sequence. There are a lot of existing work such as uh, particle video which has bridged the gap by representing video motion using a set of semi dense and long range particles and recently due to the this arise of generative AI several efforts have re revisited this problem formulating it as tracking any point and addressing it through supervised learning frameworks. I have done various videos on such work and you can search it on my channel. So great progress has already been achieved uh, but still the current solutions struggle in challenging scenarios particularly in cause of complex deformation accompanied by the frequent self occlusions. And one cause for this issue is that difficulty arises from tracking only in 2D image space thereby disregarding the inherent 3D nature of motion. As motion takes place in 3D space, certain properties um, can only be adequately expressed through 3D representation. For example, rotation can be succinctly explained by three parameters in 3D and occlusions can be simply expressed with Z buffering but they are much more complicated to express within a 2D representation. So that is where this work really shines because not only it recognizes all of these but also it tries to fix in a very very simple way. So the triplane representation is compact and regular suitable for this learning framework. Also it covers the 3D space densely enabling them to extract the feature vector of any 3D point for tracking and that is the key. And then they compute 3D trajectories for query pixels to iterative updates predicted by a transformer using features from their triplane representation. There is a lot of information, lot of examples scattered throughout this paper and I will definitely drop the link in video description so that you can uh, read it more. Now let's have a quick look at the pipeline of this method. First they are encoding each frame into a triplane representation which is a figure A on the top using a triplane encoder then in the figure B they initialize and iteratively update point trajectories in the 3D space using a transformer with features extracted from these triplane as input. And then in the figure C, the 3D trajectories are trained with ground truth annotations and are regularized by as rigid as possible. And then ARAP constraint with learned rigidity embedding. In the figure D, the ARAP constraint enforces that 3D distances between points with similar rigidity embeddings remain constant over time. So 
this method produces accurate long range motion tracks even under fast movements and severe occlusions which is great so method is quite simple here given a monocular video as input their method tracks any given query pixels across the entire video different from prior methods that establishes correspondence solely in the 2d space they then lift pixels to 3d using an off-the-shelf monocular depth estimator and perform tracking in a 3d space with richer and more spatially meaningful 3d conceptual information and that enhances the overall tracking performance and how good is that now as i mentioned that there are a lot of other examples as you can see on the screen i could go on and on there are a lot of applications in this one where there is running happening running kid or swing and then at the bottom there is a car so amazing stuff here so primarily what is happening here is that they are showing that a properly designed 3d representation is crucial for solving the long-standing challenge of dense and long range motion estimation in videos motion naturally occurs in 3d and tracking motion in 3d allows us to better leverage its regularity in 3d for example the air app constraint that is where they have proposed this new framework that estimates 3d trajectories using triplane representations with a learnable air app constraint that identifies the rigid groups in the scene and enforces rigidity within each group Experiments have already demonstrated the superior performance of their method compared to existing baseline and its applicability to challenging real-world scenarios. Their current model relies on off-the-shelf monocular depth estimator whose accuracy may affect the final tracking performance. But they anticipate that advancement in monocular reconstruction will enhance the performance of motion estimation and they expect a closer interplay between these two problems benefiting each other in the near future as i said a lot of good stuff is already present here and i would highly highly encourage you to go through it because uh, this is simply amazing and another thing is that this is uh, a combined effort by the Chiang university uc berkeley and group so equal contribution and all of these researchers amazing definitely amazing work by them and the reason why I am saying that because after reading this paper, you would also agree that uh, this approach achieves state of the art tracking performance, both qualitatively and quantitatively, particularly in challenging scenarios such as out of plane rotation. That's it, guys. I will drop the link to it in video's description. Please let me know what do you think. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, then please share it among your network as it helps. Thanks for watching.